Mike Jack. Mike Jack. We are here today. We are here today. To draw attention to the foreclosure problem in Jefferson County. To draw attention to the foreclosure problem in Jefferson County. And nationwide. And nationwide. Every Friday at 10 a.m. Every Friday at 10 a.m. All across Washington. All across Washington. Hundreds of foreclosures are auctioned at county courthouses. Hundreds of foreclosures are auctioned at county courthouses. Lenders and big banks, Lenders and big banks have created a foreclosure system that they control. Have created a foreclosure system that they control. Which provides huge profits to the 1%. Which provides huge profits to the 1%. The same is true here in PT. The same is true here in PT. Direct action like this is, I, I believe, really a critical um, uh, step in trying to change things um, and it, it you really cannot um, exaggerate the importance of things like this this is really people taking time out of their lives um, and putting themselves out there to take a stand to try to make change the, the banks uh, precipitated a problem through their gambling with derivatives uh, and other kinds of uh, loans that a crisis that supposedly was going to bring down the economic system. And to get rid of that, the governments obey, uh, borrowed money to bail them out. And uh, now they have all this money that they got from the governments that the governments are now indebted for, and they're not loaning out the money that they gave, that they were given. <clears throat> and they're saying to the governments, well, if you want us to continue to loan money back to you, you either have to cut spending or raise taxes. And, you know, they had us, you know, over the barrel. They, they it was essentially a extortion. They had us extortion in the first place, and now they've got us in extortion again, saying we're not going to loan you the money that you gave us and bailed us out again. And so this is what Occupy realizes. Four auctions today uh, of houses, whether or not they go through, that's... You know, sometimes people get them stopped because they declare bankruptcy or they get a lawyer to file a lawsuit. Uh, one of these auctions is um, by a, a loan from, from Quimper Community Credit Union. And that's probably the only valid auction here today because like uh, loans of old, uh, the bank would loan you their money or their depositors' money and then they would take that note and they would stick it in the vault until uh, such time as you paid it off or possibly defaulted, in which case they would ask the local trustee who was in charge of the deed and whose name was on the deed to foreclose on the property so they could recoup their loss. The grantor is the person who took out the loan and then um, what it happens is uh, they, they, they granted this loan into uh, First American Title Insurance Company as trustee to secure an obligation in in favor of mortgage electronic systems mm. solely as nominee for PMC Bancorp as beneficiary. The beneficial interest which was assigned by mortgage electronic systems to U.S. National Bank as trustee successor in interest to Bank of America National Association as trustee successor by merger to LaSalle National Bank National Association as wow. trustee <laughs> for Morgan Stanley Mortgage Loan Trust 2 2007 7AX under an assignment successes of the assignments recorded under auditor's file number, the tax parcel ID number, blah blah blah. So, so who has the real title? So, <laughs> so the, the question comes is yes, who is the note holder? Who has the obligation? Who is the creditor in interest? Who gets the money when the person makes the payments? Now, so what's going to happen today is an auction, and what's going to happen is a guy from Paulsville is going to come here with a clipboard and he's going to say any bidders on this property and I have a minimum bid from the creditor of $350,000 or whatever the money is and they're going to say I have a minimum bid from the creditor and it's my contention that this creditor has no idea that this auction is even taking place or that the homeowner is in default because the servicer of the loan and the real creditor and interest and the homeowner are completely separated by this fraudulent transaction called securitization. So, I'm here today because I want to put a bid in, uh, a yeah. little tiny little bid, 
because that's all I've got. But I believe that their bid is a fraudulent bid. And that three of, of these four auctions are in violation of Washington RCW, which is the Administrative Code of Washington, or whatever it's called. And it's called mock auctions. Every person who shall obtain any money or property from another, or shall obtain the signature of another to any writing, the false making of which would be forgery by color or aid or any false fraudulent sale of property or pretended sale of property by auction, or by any of the practices known as mock auction, shall be punished by imprisonment in the state correction facility for not more than five years or in the county jail for up to 364 days, or by a fine of not more than $1,000 or by both. Every person who shall buy or sell or pretend to buy or sell any goods, wares, or merchandise exposed to sale or auction by auction, if an actual sale, purchase and, ex and change of ownership therein does not thereupon take place, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. So basically, what I'm saying is they do not have a, a credible bid from the real creditor in interest. And also, <clears throat> the other situation which is a violation of Washington law is that it's illegal for the trustee to be both the beneficiary and the trustee. So, in other words, it's a violation of the trust. The trustee is supposed yeah. to be an independent adjudicator between yeah. the lender yeah. and the borrower. Now, suddenly, the trustee is the beneficiary, yeah. which we would just call the agent of the lender, and the trustee. So, you know, that's just a plain violation of the trust of the trustee, and that's against the law. Yeah. 